Welcome to the Love Your Pets podcast, a podcast for pet lovers in Ireland where you get pet tips, news, and interviews. It's educational, it's informative, but most of all, it's It's fun. fun. Welcome your host, Kate McQuillan. Welcome pet lovers to your weekly episode of the Love Your Pets podcast brought to you from a quite mild island. Um, It's not hot, but it's actually quite bright and it's dry. Um, So it's really quite nice and fresh. Now, remember, if you want the show notes in your inbox, go to PetSittersIsland.com forward slash love your pets podcast. And each week I'll send you the link to the podcast and the notes that go with it. Okay, so let's get this show started with our weekly fun fact. Now, did you know that dogs can smell thousands of times better than humans? Their noses have millions more scent receptors. For example, human nose averages around 5 million while a dash hounds has 125 million, making them really useful in sniffing out things like bed bugs, explosives, drugs, lots of things like that. Now, if you have a dog, you will know this is absolutely true because you only have to open something food-wise and they are straight there. They smell it out in a second. Um, so it's definitely something that dogs have um, that really makes them quite a character. So I've got a couple of stories in the Poor Time Press this week. The first one is about a 31-year-old cat. Now, really, could this cat be 31 years old? But anyway, the owners are claiming that the cat, Nutmeg, is actually 31 years old, and they're looking for paperwork to prove the cat's age at the moment. Apparently, they got it from a rescue, and when they first took it to the vets, the vet said it was around five years old. Um, which would now make it 31. So they're looking to try and prove that. I presume they're trying to get in the Guinness Book of Records. Um, We'll see. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see if the cat really is 31. He doesn't look uh, that old. He looks in great condition and seemingly is quite healthy. He had an operation 12 months ago, um, but he's actually doing really, really well. The other story that I read this week was actually in Good Housekeeping magazine online and it was about doggy disasters and it really made me laugh because these are all things that I know my dogs have done. So basically Good Housekeeping put together this list of 15 things, mischievous things that dogs get up to that we love them for. So I'm just going to read them. I'm going to put the link to the article in the show notes, but I'm just going to go through the 15 because they're so funny and they're so true. If you have a dog, you're going to totally relate to this. So number one is destroying their own bed. So how many beds have you bought for your dog? And then looking really cute once they did it. They always look cute, slightly guilty, but cute at the same time. Number three, sampling plants in the house. Yeah, Joey's really bad for this, for just kind of like ripping something off as he goes past. Um, Number four, searching for buried treasure. They're always burying stuff, whether it be out in the garden or burying things under piles of washing. That's what my two do, um, which is quite interesting. I'm not sure why they do that. Napping where you are trying to work. My two are so bad for this. And my cat. If you're on the laptop, the cat wants to sit on your knee or on the desk. If you're working, Joey's constantly patting you on the arm to get your attention. So that's definitely something they do. Number six, getting really dirty. All dogs do this. And then number seven, jumping on the bed, furniture, carpets, wherever, when they are dirty. Number eight, getting into your makeup. This was something that my cat, not the current cat that we have, a previous cat, was really into. As soon as you got any kind of face powder out or anything like that, he was straight up sniffing it. He absolutely loved it. Number nine, always sitting on the furniture. That's just something that any animals do, dogs or cats, um, and always sitting where you want to sit. Number 10, opening the mail. If you have a post box that comes through the door, a a letterbox, um, you'll know that some dogs love to just chew up that mail. Number 11, drinking out the toilet. Um, I caught Joey doing this when we first got him, so I don't know where he learned that from, Uh, but he doesn't do it anymore. Good thing is to keep the toilet seats down. Number 12, using your stuff as a chew toy. Dogs love this. Anything you leave down, they can be chewing away at, especially when they're puppies. Number 13, drenching you when you bath them. Nothing like bathing your dog or putting them in the shower, washing them down, and then them just shaking all over you or rubbing up against you. They like to do that too. 
Number 14, staring at your food constantly. I don't know a dog that doesn't do this. The sad little eyes, the, oh my gosh, I've never been fed for a year look, um, just because they want a bite of your sandwich. And then number 15, stealing the toilet roll when you're not looking. Definitely. This always reminds me of the Andrex puppies ad, uh, but that's definitely something. Dogs love to chew just anything. So I thought they were great, really funny. I put the link to the article and there's some great, really funny pictures they've included as well. Now our post and pet shout out this week is actually a dog called Kelly that was dressed as Wonder Woman on Twitter. Great picture, really fantastic. So check out the show notes for that. And remember, if you want your pets to be internet famous, then post a picture of your pet on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Love Your Pets podcast. And each week I'll pick the coolest pets from around the world to feature. <laughs> You're listening to the Love Your Pets podcast, sponsored by Pet Sitters Ireland. Planning a trip or need your dog walking? Then contact Pet Sitters Ireland at www.petsittersireland.com for all your pet care needs. So in the spotlight this week, we are actually interviewing Barbara from Super Pets. And during this interview, we learned lots of things about the company, about Barbara herself and where the idea came from and her passion that she has for healthy dog treats. Also, the different products that they actually offer. They have three products, um, all of which are fantastic and totally healthy and safe for your dogs. So we learned about them. And then actually Barbara shared some really interesting insights into unhealthy dog treats and research that had been done. So I think you're going to really enjoy this interview um, and I'll catch up with you in a short while. Well, I'm delighted to introduce Barbara from Super Pets here today to talk to us about her fantastic range of treats. So I'm delighted you're here, Barbara. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Great you're to welcome. Here. You're welcome. So I thought what we do is start off by maybe you can tell the listeners just a little bit about uh, you and your background and how these fabulous treats came about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, I actually uh, decided to leave the rat race back in 2008 and um, I went to Africa to take some time out to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and I always loved, absolutely love animals and um, I wanted to start my own business so I combined the two and I started a dog grooming business down in Galway called Pet Angels um, and it was during this time I was just so shocked and horrified to see these dogs coming in that were obese, overweight, had skin allergies, had diabetes, had pancreatitis and I decided to do my own research and I was um, shocked to see the link between a lot of these commercial pet foods and these illnesses that were making dogs sick. Um, so my, um, my mission was to create a range of treats that were super healthy, that were safe for dogs that had allergies, that were low in fat, that pet owners could feed their pets completely guilt free knowing that they were getting the absolute healthiest treat. Um, so I, I started experimenting my kitchen and uh, I came up with the idea for the papaya, sweet potato and coconut dog chew. So it's very similar to rawhide, it's got that chewiness but you're, you're making it out of superfoods. Um, and it kind of just went from there, I started selling them in the market and um, then people were contacting me on Facebook and I was getting orders from the UK and Spain. And I decided, right, there really is a business in this, so I'm going to do this properly. And um, that's, it's now nearly over three years later. Wow. Um, that's amazing stuff. Yeah. And I can say for myself, my two dogs love them. They've tried the sweet potato and the coconut. I must get them the papaya ones then. Um, and I've actually had quite a few of the coconut ones myself. They really are lovely. And what's good about them is they're so chewy. Um, the sweet potato just seems to last them for ages. You know, they're not just gulping down treat after treat. So how do you actually yeah. make them? What goes into the process? Yeah, so it's quite um, a, a tricky process because we actually use absolutely no preservatives. Um, and, and to do that, we dry the, the raw ingredients over 12 hours over for, um, with a very gentle heat. It's called dehydration. So these products are actually um, essentially raw. Um, and that protects all the nutrients and the vitamins and the minerals. So they really are getting the most con concentrated nutritional benefits. Um, and um, that's, that's, that's how we make them, you know? So, so there's uh, nothing added to them then? There's no additives or preservatives? So it's just the pure product itself? Absolutely. 
absolutely nothing. And that's one thing that we're very, very passionate about is using no preservatives. Because really, when you look at dogs, dogs really shouldn't be ingesting those kind of things like preservatives, additives, sugars, salts, and you know, unhealthy fats. Really, they shouldn't have any of those in their diets. And that's what's causing a lot of these allergies that you see dogs suffering from. So that's the one thing we're very passionate about. Any of our products, they are 100% natural. Um, and that's for anything that we'll do now or in the future. That's fantastic. And like you say, it's very unusual um, because everything really seems to have additives in it, you know, whether it be dog food or human food, really, nowadays. Exactly. I think people are getting smarter, you know, they're getting more educated and um, people are, you know, um, um, seeking products that are more natural and organic and healthy. And that's in pet foods as well. And, you know, dogs are seeing the benefits my dog, Lily, I make her food every week. Um, I freeze a batch and I only use, you know, fresh organic meat from the local butcher and, um, you know, steamed and mashed vegetables, um, coconut oil, different things. And she is just incredible. Her skin, her coat, she's never goes to the vet. She's never sick. She's full of energy, never puts on weight. Um, and I think when you look at a pet, you know, commercial pet foods are actually a relatively new thing. They're only 25 years old. Um, before that, people would have, you know, given scraps and you know fruits you know, fruits and vegetables on the table and meat from the butcher um, and dogs were a lot healthier back then exactly so, it's know, interesting think- it's interesting you say as well about you know lily's never at the vets um you know she's never sick that's a cost saving in itself because if your dog gets sick you know and you take it to the vets um mm-hmm. you know, it's not cheap is it um, so oh, to feed them more healthy, natural foods, it's got to be better all around. Um, and I think people tend to think natural treats are more expensive. But what I've found with these treats is, yeah, they would be a little bit more than something you're going to buy cheap in the pet shop. But that's to be expected, you know, because they're natural. But they last a lot longer. You know, you're not giving them handfuls and handfuls of treats. You know, you're giving them a treat that they can sit down and, you know, hopefully enjoy um, and taste it because I know some treats you give Joey he just I don't even think he bites them I think he just like mm-hmm. swallows them like a little hoover he's just like sucks them in and they're gone but with these he has to take his time you know he has to you know mm-hmm. sit down with it and actually chew away on it so you know mm-hmm. it's be good for their teeth and and their digestion and everything exactly like I do recommend to a lot of our you know a lot of people a lot of pet owners if you want to give your dog a treat, you know, chop up some some apple or carrot or, you know, um, some maybe melon as well. They love melon. Um, these are all fresh, you know, and they actually do have health benefits. You I know? actually love carrots. They really do. The only thing is they make such a mess with them then because there's just bits of carrot everywhere. Um, but yeah, they love anything like that. I think anything that you're eating, they seem to like, you know. Um, mm. That's, that's always true too. So if somebody is looking to make treats at home, like I've tried, I have a dehydrator and I've tried dehydrating uh, meats and fruits and veg. The meats worked very well. I found that the actual vegetables and fruit went very crispy and maybe that's because it was on too high for a shorter period of time maybe. But like if somebody wanted to try making something like this or a healthy treats at home, what type of tips could you give them for that? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of recipes on our website, actually. Um, some really, really healthy, easy to follow recipes. Um, I mean, something as simple as, you know, putting a little bit of coconut oil on your hand and getting your dog to lick it off is absolutely fantastic because coconut oil, um, a recent study actually was done in America and um, it, it found that after a month of giving coconut oil to uh, senior dogs, it increased their uh, cognitive abilities substantially. So it's really like brain food for dogs. And even just something as simple as getting a you know, like half teaspoon, putting it on your hand and getting your dog to lick it off is an amazing treat. Um, and they, like, they must like the taste of that then. Can you put that in their food? Absolutely. Dogs love coconut oil. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> more than meat sometimes it's incredible um and you can put it on their food you can put it on their kibble if you want to add a little bit more of goodness put it on your hand as i said and get it to get them to lick it off there's also some great recipes on a website where you can um use coconut oil in little ice ice cube trays um, and freeze them and then pop them out and that's a really nice treat as well 
Um, so anything simple like that. And as I said, fresh vegetables is fantastic. Chop up a couple of carrots, you know, chop up maybe some apple, banana, um, anything like that that's fresh. You know, fresh is best, 100%. And anything that people should be avoiding then, because I know obviously some fruits um, you shouldn't be giving to, to your dog. So, you know, we're saying carrot. I think like apple pips and stuff like that, you definitely have to be very careful. So removing all the apple pips and the cores mm -hmm. before you eat them. And grapes are really dangerous. Uh, yes. so no grapes, no raisins. Um, banana in moderation because it would be higher in sugar. But anything like carrots and apple, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, they're low fat, they're low sugars. So, yeah, great treat, great natural treat. And do you have any plans to make any meat-based treats or are you going to stick to the kind of fruit side of things? Yeah, I mean, this is a question we get asked a lot. And um, I suppose what we're trying to do is um, provide the nutritional part of your dog's diet. So the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants, the enzymes, and the best way to do that is in plant-based, uh, plant form. Um, we don't advocate dogs to be vegan or vegetarian. Um, you know, I think a balanced diet is really important, and that includes, you know, um, well, what I do is I support, you know, buying your meat from your local butcher so you know it's ethical and it's, you know, antibody-free, et cetera. But um, what we want to do is to be able to make it easy for you to add all the vitamins and minerals and antioxidants, all the good stuff that your dog needs to be, you know, the best of health um, so that you can add that to your dog's di daily diet. And the best way to do that is through plant-based foods. Um, a recent study, actually, a really interesting study came up there a couple of months ago and it actually documented that adding 90%, sorry, adding um, more leafy green vegetables at least three times a week to your dog's diet um, reduced uh, development of cancer in your dog by 90%, wow. which is astounding and even yellow and um, orange vegetables it reduces your chance of your dog's chance of getting cancer by 70 percent so these have all been studies that have been done it really does show that you know um, adding fruits and vegetables from plant-based ingredients makes a massive difference to your dog's diet and that's what we want to concentrate on that's huge isn't it i mean 90 percent that's yeah. just incredible that's um, pretty much saying if you do this there's a very, very, very slight chance that they would get anything, you know? Um, exactly. It's increasing your dog's longevity, you know, really. Which is what we all want. Yeah. And there was actually a really interesting documentary done on the oldest living dog in America. He uh, died recently. He was 30 years old. Can you believe wow. that? Um, and its owner was a farmer. And he put the reason down to him living so long was the fact that he never fed him processed foods. Um, he only ever uh, fed him um, fresh food fresh fruits and vegetables and meat so wow. uh, that's proof then really isn't it i must get yeah. some of these links off you so that we can put them in the show notes for people so that they can have a read of some of these articles um, i take it lily is the chief tester then of all products that you make she is indeed yes <laughs> She's one very lucky dog <laughs> she is <laughs> and do you find, because um, I know with my two, when I first got the, I think it was the sweet potato ones we had first, um, Coco loved them. She'd dive straight into them. Joey was kind of a bit, you know, what's this? And now I actually caught him stealing some off the table yesterday. It actually made me laugh because I knew I was going to be talking to you. Um, do you find that all dogs take to them? Sometimes it takes them a little while to get used to the smell and texture of them. Or how do you yeah. find them work? Like, I think with, with these products, because there's nothing added, there's no salt or sugar or um, flavorings of any sort. It does, um, maybe some dogs might kind of just sniff them initially and then kind of come back to them. But once they kind of start chewing and getting the natural flavors, they just love them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just all about trying something different. And once they try them, then... I suppose it's the same, you know, with us, isn't it? When we try something that's a more healthy option, you're kind of adjusting to the, the different flavor and those additives you kind of get used to. I'm sure it's probably the same for dogs. They get used to those enhanced flavors and additives that they would experience in other treats. Um, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit of re-education. They both absolutely love them. Like I was telling you before, um, I think I ate most of the coconut ones last time. Um, they're really nice. Uh, really tasty, really kind of crunch on them. They're lovely. Uh, mm. so I really enjoyed those. Um, so if people want to get in touch with you, I'll put some links in for your um, articles on treats and stuff. I know you've got lots of recipes on there people can look at. 
But if they want to actually buy the products and find out more about you, how do people go about doing that? Yeah, absolutely. We have a stockist page on our website, which we update regularly. So it has all the most recent and up-to-date stockists in Ireland and the UK. Um, in Ireland, um, we are in all Pet Mania and Pet World stores. So Ooh. you can find them there. Um, and in the UK, then Pets Corner and um, 36 stores Pets at Home. So you're in the UK, Ireland, and did you say Spain as well? Yeah, we, we launched in Spain and um, that's gone really well. And we just launched in Switzerland, actually. Wow. Um, and Holland. So, yeah, it's um, word, is, word is getting out there, you know. We're, we're, um, yeah. I think people are changing their attitudes altogether on um, sort of what they want for their pets. And exactly. you know, we all want our pets to live as long as possible. And if it means switching them up to a different type of more healthy tree, you know, why would it not be that? Um, why wouldn't you want to give them the longest life possible? Uh, it's fantastic and a great business, great business model. And it's fantastic that you've you know, got into Europe so quickly and uh, spreading the, the love yeah. over there. It's, it really is great. Yeah, we're just so passionate. You know, that's, that's where this all comes from. Um, you know, it's been, it's been really hard work. And when we started, it was quite a new idea using plant-based dog treats you know I think a lot of people are scratching their heads going what is this one at but you know it's taken time and our customers are really loyal and they're fantastic very supportive and they just kind of kept us going it's just getting those messages from customers saying look my dog loves them and you know they're healthy and it's great to be able to give my dog something that's got nutrition and it's got benefits so that's what keeps us going that's what fuels us you know and some and a treat that lasts more than 10 milliseconds yeah. I think is what I love as well you know you're giving them something healthy and also it's something that they sit down and actually yeah. do on um, as opposed to just kind of inhaling their treats um, yeah, exactly. what tends to happen yeah it definitely. and it's something that we can eat as well <laughs> Oh, yeah, papaya are my favourite. <laughs> I'm definitely getting some of those. So whether the dogs see any of them is another thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I know people are going to love this product. Um, we have a lot of listeners um, that really love um, the actual kind of natural diet and cooking for their dogs. And these treats are just perfect to go alongside that. And it'd be interesting for people to try out some of your recipes as well. I must take a look at those myself, see what I can make for my two. Um, because, you know, anything that you make for your pets, I think they always really enjoy anything that's kind of healthy, you always feel good about. Exactly. And it's so nice to actually, you know, take that time to make something for your, your pet and seeing them enjoy it so much, you know, seeing them wolfing it down. It's really yes. nice. And they never criticize either. I think that's the great thing. I could make a cake for my husband and he'd be kind of like, oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you, make, you make little cakes for your dogs and they're like, oh, my gosh, these are great. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't even have to be a great baker or cook to cook for your dogs. You know, they'll love you for it anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's nice to do. We'll, do we'll put all those uh, links so that everybody can find out more about you and where to buy the products in the show notes. And um, if we have listener questions, then I'll definitely forward those on to you. And thanks so much for coming on to the show. Uh, thank you so much, Kate. Thanks for having us. You're listening to the Love Your Pets podcast, sponsored by Pet Sitters Ireland. Planning a trip or need your dog walking? Then contact Pet Sitters Ireland at www.petsittersireland.com for all your pet care needs. It was really nice chatting to Barbara today, and I love the super pet treats. Um, they're a great alternative to some of those unhealthy options that are out there for your pets. And as we talked about, why wouldn't you want to extend the life of your pet in any way that you could? And by giving them healthy treats, um, that's one way to do that, healthy treats and food. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing lots more healthy treats from Super Pets. I think there's a lot more to come there. Now, this podcast has been sponsored by Pet Sitters Island for all your pet sitting and dog walking needs. If you enjoyed it, which I'm sure you did, then please sign up on iTunes to listen every week and it would be totally, totally, totally awesome if you gave us a review on iTunes. Now, don't forget you can get the show notes in your inbox to save your time each week at petsittersisland.com forward slash love your pets podcast. And if you're looking for previous episodes of the show, then you can find all of those at loveyourpetspodcast.com and I'll chat to you next week. Have a great day. Thanks so much for listening to the Love Your Pets podcast with your host, Kate McQuillan. 